Good afternoon and welcome to the planning um, meeting here today on the 13th of January 2022. And um, I'm Councillor Gary Marsh. I'm the chairman for the meeting for here today. On my left is my vice chairman, Councillor Philip Coote. Beyond him is Zach. He's our legal officer for today. To his left is the chief legal officer, Mr. Clark. To my right are the two planning officers who are going to do the main bulk of the speaking when it comes to telling us what's happening. And in front of me are the members of the committee who are going to be making those decisions. Off to our left is um, Lucinda, who's been taking the minutes. And off to the right are the technical team. <laughs> so, without much further to do, um, Oh, before we go any further, can I get the um, Deputy Chairman just to read out the safety procedure? Yep. The building fire alarm signal is a continuous two-tone alarm. On hearing the evacuation alarm, one, leave the building by the nearest marked exit route. Two, follow the green signs to the assembly point, large staff car park opposite the entrance to the building. Three, anyone who cannot use the stairs will be helped by the officers present after the people have left. Four, do not return to the building until told it is safe to do so by any authorised officer. The whole of the council's site is a no smoking area. Filming from the public gallery is permitted, but members must please refrain from filming within the council chamber so as not to dis distract the meeting. Mobile phones must be switched to silent. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. All right, we'll start then. Item one is to receive apologies from absence. I have one, which is Councillor Cogunnel White. Item two is to receive declarations of interest from members in respect of any matter on the agenda. No, I have none. Item three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 11th of November 2021, we should be able to come up in a second, touch the screen. If you agree with the minutes, it's press the green. If you don't like the minutes, it's red. And if you abstain, it is green. Uh, red, the yellow, sorry. Do you want me to press the green? No, it's well, up to you. That's 11. And I can see a clear majority um, will put the minutes. I'll, I'll sign the minutes after the, um, as you can see on the screens in front and behind you. Um, I'll sign the minutes after the end of the meeting, Lucinda. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Item four. I've had a request. And it's probably me going to make the most noise. Try not to make paper rustling, apparently it's not very good. So I've always received items that I agreed to take as urgent business, I have none, so we get to the substantive part for today, which is item five, which is DM 212688, Stone Rocks Farm, Cross Colwood Lane, Bolney, West Sussex. And um, the officer in this case is Mr King, because the other officer is not well. Mr. King. Thank you, Chairman. Um, before I go through the application, there's just one update on the update sheet uh, regarding the um, arrangements for refuse collection. Um, and so that's on the update sheet that I think members have had a chance to, to read. So the application is at Stone Rocks Farm, Cross Colwood Lane in Balney. And the application seeks planning permission for the siting of three uh, luxury glamping pods together with associated landscaping and car parking. So this is the, um, the application site outlined in red on the screen here. Um, it's on the north side of Cross Colwood Lane. Um, the site's within the countryside and it's also within the high wheel air outstanding natural beauty boundary of the high wheeled A O N B uh, runs along Cross Colwood Lane, so that the land to the north is all, all within the A O N B. Uh, the blue line denotes um, land that's also in the um, control of the applicants. 
so the site uh, comprises a number of uh, farm buildings at the southern end of the site in an area of hard standing. Um, then there's a, an access track that goes uh, up to the north and it's proposed that the, the glamping pods would be uh, sited at the northern end of the, of the site in these locations here. So pod one, three. Uh, the site and surrounds are described on page 14 of the committee report. Um, there is quite a rise in levels through the site from uh, south to north, so you're walking up the hill um, to get up to, up to this point. The nearest residential property to the site is uh, the property uh, to the east, uh, the yards, and that's referred to again in the committee report. This plan is just a, a zoomed out plan um, showing the location of the site, but it just uh, gives the uh, locations of various uh, public rights of way that are around the, the site, uh, just to give a, a bit of context as to to what's going on around the site. So the, the application is for the uh, erection of those three glamping pods in the location shown. And these are the um, elevations of the proposed uh, pods. So timber structures, uh, very modest in size, three metres by 6.2, with a uh, curved roof three metres in height. Uh, toilet, bedroom, small genetic type area um, in terms of the, the pods themselves. The application also proposes um, additional uh, landscaping within the site. So it's proposed um, native hedgerow down here. Um, this is the area of existing hard standing that you'll see in the photos. In due course, uh, it's proposed that the car parking uh, for the pods located here on the existing hard standing. And it's proposed also that there would be additional uh, tree planting around the three pods that you can see. So one, two. Just some photos um, of, the, of the site. So this is at the southern end. So this area is the um, existing hard standing where the car parking would be located as referred to. So that, that hedge planting would be across there. That's a view from towards the entrance gate looking in, into the site again at those, those buildings. Um, okay. Views um, within the site, so this is the um, access track within the site as you can see uh, the rising level so going up up the hill um, to get get to those pods and just pictures of the uh, the site and surrounds um, three and the patient plan. Uh, the issues are as set out in the committee report, so I won't go through them in any great detail, but we'll just um, highlight the, the main points. In terms of the principle of the application, that's dealt with on page 18 of the committee report. Uh, the site is in the countryside, where district plan policy DP12 does allow development, um, where it maintains or enhances the quality of the rural landscape and is supported by other policies, um, as this is a tourism uh, related uh, development. It's your officer's view that supports provided by uh, the policies referred to in the report, uh, DP 14 and, and 19 in the district plan, and BOL double B1 and BOL E2 in the neighbourhood plan. Uh, design and the impact on the AONB, that's dealt with on page uh, 20 of the, of the committee report. Um, it's again your officer's view that the design of the buildings is acceptable in this um, sensitive countryside landscape. Um, modest timber structures that, that should blend in into the landscape. Um, and there would, as we've seen, be additional planting um, around the, the structures and at the uh, southern of the site. 
Uh, in terms of labour amenity issues, that's dealt with on page 23 of their committee report. Um, as I mentioned, the, the nearest residential property is, is the yards uh, here. So you've got the access road that runs along uh, to the north residential property. Um, in terms of distance from the, that property to the, the nearest pod, it's uh, some 240 metres. Um, highway safety, that's dealt with on page 24, and you'll see there's been no objection uh, from the Highway Authority uh, to the application in respect of either the um, use of the access in terms of visibility, etc., or the, the volume of, of traffic. And the other main issue to highlight was just in respect of ecology and trees, that's on page 27 of the committee report. Um, the site isn't within a designated uh, nature conservation area, um, and it's not at nature conservation value. Um, and, on, and the application, as we've seen, isn't for the demolition or conversion of existing buildings, um, but is for, for new structures on um, existing uh, grassed areas. Uh, and on that basis, it, it wasn't um, justified to require um, ecological reports, etc., and the reasons for that have, are also set out in the committee report, um, and it's also noted that um, any protected species are obviously protected by the, the relevant wildlife legislation uh, in, in any event. So, uh, for the reasons this is set out in the committee report, it's your officer's view that the uh, application complies with the relevant policies that are identified in the development plan the applications therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. King. Uh, we do have a number of speakers on this. Um, the, well, the councillor from Bolney's here already, sitting in his seat. Um, when you start to speak, the Legal Officers Act will switch on the green light, and the, for 90 seconds it will turn to amber, and then you've got 30 seconds to, to carry on speaking. And when it turns to red, I would like you to conclude in one sentence, please. Thank you. As soon as you start to speak, the green light will come on. Thank you. Right, I, I'm Baron von Thunderclap, representing Bolney Parish Council, um, who are objecting to this. Several reasons. The site is in the area of outstanding natural beauty. It overlooks neighbours who will suffer from loss of privacy, both by the height of the pods looking down over her property, they have a clear view, and also the traffic going in and out all, all um, hours of day and night. We foresee problems with parking, along with extra traffic on an unlit road, which is single track and in many places had two passing spaces, not enough width for two cars to pass. Um, there will be no control over access or fires as the owners will not be on site. So despite the fact there is no campfires allowed, there will be no control over this. There are no services such as fire hydrants near the property. And there's insufficient supply currently there. Despite what the applicant says, there is no mains draining on the site, so we envisage problems with both sewerage and runoff. There's no heritage statement, despite being adjacent to a listed building. We suspect that if this is granted, it will open the door for five more pods to be built. So, for four more pods to be built in the future would exasperate the problems already mentioned. Originally, they did ask for more pods than are there now, and we can envisage that if this is granted within three or four years, they will try and get more pods there. The problem which I can foresee is these will be people from outside the area using these narrow country lanes for which are not familiar. There are no facilities immediately at these glamping pods. They're going to have to travel into the Bowley Town to the pubs or the restaurants to eat and drink. They're then going to have to drive home in a pitch black and unlit road, which they don't know, um, in a very dodgy traffic area. We could still see lots of problems with that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if you'd like to... to oh, there is a seat behind Councillor Forbes there. Uh, and before the next speaker, call the next speaker, we do, uh, because of COVID, we do have to wipe down everything. So by the time we finish tonight, that will be the cleanest seat in the country. That will. Be. Thank you. 
Happy? No, not yet. Um, again, speaking against this application. I will be speaking on behalf of Mr and Mrs Burke in relation to their interests in the yards immediately to the southeast of Stone Rocks Farm. Stone Rocks Farm is an undulating, tranquil landscape featuring vast expanses of open grassland and ancient woodland. It is a habitat for mammals and birds. The site is not occupied by its owners and the only buildings are adjacent to Cross Colwood Lane. The proposed development would fundamentally change the character of an untouched area of the countryside. And whilst officers have stated that permitted development rights allow for the temporary use of the land for movable structures, the proposal under consideration is for permanent, non-movable holiday accommodation. Therefore, it does not benefit from permitted development rights. There is very little information about the benefits of the proposed development, the employment opportunities or ways in which local skills and services will be improved. We therefore question how the proposal will actually benefit the local economy. The locations of the three glamping pods do not utilise previously developed land and will be in the open countryside. Officers acknowledge the proximity of trees and ancient woodland, therefore why has a tree survey not been requested? The High Wheel Joint Advisory Committee highlight the potential for ecological impact of such development, therefore why has a full ecological assessment not been undertaken? There are serious concerns from both our client and local residents as to how the site will be managed, given that there is no accommodation for owners or staff. And it's extremely concerning that no information has been requested by officers, leaving a number of questions unanswered. Why has a management plan not been requested on such a remote site? How will emergency vehicles access the accommodation? How will fire safety be ensured? And how will lighting be used? And what will the impact be on the dark landscape of the AONB? Given the points that have been raised this afternoon so far, we request that the planning committee refuses permission at Stone Rocks Farm. Again, if you'd like to take your seats, and again, as, as described before, we've now got to sanitise the area again. for Patrick Griffin, please, and he's speaking in support of this uh, application. Mr Griffin, as before, when you start pressing the button, your two minutes will start. Thank you. I'm speaking on behalf of my client, Mr James Lee, the owner of the farm, in support of this application. The detailed case has been set out in the planning statement, but in summary, the proposal has been prepared to an extremely high standard and is landscape-led from the outset in order to provide a luxury glamping experience, whilst also aiming to minimise impact on local wildlife and respect and enhance the surrounding AOMB. A chartered landscape architect was commissioned to assess the existing farmland and produce a farm-wide landscape rejuvenation strategy that identified three locations on the land with the least impact on the wider landscape and a long distance away from residential pro pro properties. The design and colour of the pr proposed pods was also led by guidance in the AOMB management plan. Contrary to what has been said, an operations state statement was sub submitted as part of the application to show how the site will be managed to min minimise disturbance. The pods will be marketed as a luxury experience accordingly, including highlighting the need to respect the tranquility of the surrounding land and woodland. In terms of planning, the planning statement and the officer report to this committee show that the proposal is well supported by policies in the district plan, which actively encourages small-scale economic development in the countryside such as this. There are numerous examples of similar and much larger recently approved glamping pod ap applications in the AOMB in mid-Sussex, such as Chiddingly Farm near Ardingly. And this application should be viewed in the same way as these. It should be noted that under current permitted development rights, my client could be using the land for much larger scale camping operations for up to 50, 56 days a year. But he has instead chosen to pursue a, a much more minimal impact luxury use at a greater cost to to himself in order to maintain the integrity of the local landscape. My client notes that Stone Rocks Farm is located adjacent to a district council member, but given the application's focus on landscape rejuvenation, his desire to enhance the natural beauty of the site, he's confident that the planning merits of the case are robust and in keeping with other successful applications in the area, 
we'd therefore urge the council to approve this ap application. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Councillor, Councillor Judy Llewellyn Burke, as um, you, you're aware, when councillors wish to speak in support or against an application, uh, they're allowed to do so. Uh, special dispensation has actually been granted in this situation because of the close proximity to the site by Councillor Llewellyn Burke. But the problem we do have here, can, uh, the Bolney is only represented by one ward councillor, so that's why the dispensation has been granted. Is that correct, Mr. Clark? That's correct. Now, also, um, the ward council is not actually subjected to uh, the two-minute rule. But he knows I don't tolerate hours and hours of speaking. So, Councillor Renenberg, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'm now going to repeat some of what you said, but I'm going to be perfectly want to make it perfectly clear. Uh, as you know, I am the ward councillor for Bolney, <clears throat> and I'm addressing you today as the elected representative of the many residents who have objected to this planning application. I'm required to de declare an interest as I live in Cross Colwood Lane next to Stone Rocks Farm and have done so for 20 years. I've obtained a dispensation from Mr. Clark to allow me to speak as ward member today, as Bolney is a single member ward. And this representation is made in the interests of persons living in the ward. To be clear, I'm asking on behalf of many local residents that you refuse this planning permission, sorry, planning application. <coughs> it appears to me that many of the practical and technical implications of the proposed development have either been subject to inadequate scrutiny or seemingly disregarded entirely. The residents of Cross Colwood Lane have already had more than their share of disturbance from activities permitted by local landowners who do not live nearby and are immune to the disturbance. For this community, this proposal raises all those worries and concerns and more. Members, what I'm asking of you is to please focus on the reality of what this application proposes. It is seeking permission to construct holiday accommodation, three new permanent buildings in the middle of AONB land. The proposed new buildings are nowhere near any of the existing <coughs> agricultural buildings. Indeed, they are a car journey away, sited at the highest levels of the land where they would be visible to local residents and the many walkers who currently enjoy the unspoiled nature of this area. Excuse me. <coughs> there is clearly nothing sustainable about this proposal, just more car journeys to and from the site as food sources, being pubs and petrol stations are all over a mile away, and within the site, more waste, more carbon emissions, and no gain whatsoever to the local economy. There is no residence and no 24-7 facility to regulate activities on this 105-acre area of outstanding natural beauty. More concerning is the inevitable damage to the local ecosystem if this proposal were permitted. The character of, the, of this landscape will be changed entirely for the worse. This land is a sanctuary for many species of wild birds and animals and what is proposed would cause immeasurable damage to their habitat. Finally, please reflect on the precedent this could create, if you allow it, permitting the construction of new permanent buildings where none have previously existed in the unspoiled AONB. The potential cumulative damage to the AONB could be far-reaching and, irre and irreversible, and the community will hold you accountable for that unwanted outcome. They will ask you, and me, the perfectly reasonable question, what is the point of the AONB if the planning authority will not protect the landscape from harmful 
and unnecessary development projects. I'm asking you please to listen to the community and refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you. Now, normally the ward council would stay in the room but for the benefit of everybody watching this and then for members, Councillor Lwenneberg has to now leave the chamber and uh, because of the uh, um, declaration she's made at the beginning of her statement. So we'll wait till Councillor Lwenneberg departs. Do you want to clean it now or do it later? Okay, do it later. Okay, now before we start, a couple of things were said which I do feel before we start the debate for some clarification. Um, one was made in my ward, Chitton D Farm in Ardenai. Those who know Ardenai, as I represent Ardenai, um, there are shops in Ardenai, but there are none in Bolney for starters. And I'd like to clarify the 56 years. 56 years, sorry, 56 day rule, um, because I feel that's only a temporary thing. It's not been granted permanent status yet. It should only be 28 days of committed development. But uh, Mr. King, if you could please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. That's correct. Um, permitted development rights exist um, to use land for, for temporary purposes, things like camping, etc. And um, during COVID, um, those rights were extended from 28 days to 56 days, um, but that has now lapsed, so it's gone back to the 28 days, which is referred to in the committee report. So you can use land for temporary uh, purposes for 28 days. Thank you. I just wanted some clarification for that. Okay. Now, before we uh, open it up to the floor, won't we uh, um, allow members to start, but I'm going to start first, because I've got a, a similar situation in my wall just outside Balcombe. Um, a glamping uh, pods which was uh, put in and it's been supported by this council and what happened in those who do know it if you do know the Cowdery Arms on coming out of Balkan towards um, Crawley uh, there's the, the road from Turners Hill to um, Hancross the B2110 there's a three or four pods uh, as you turn into the, off the B2036 onto the towards Hancross on the left hand side now the difference is that's got somebody living in that house and uh, and you wouldn't see because they're actually surrounded in the trees so I just want to say we're not against this it's whether this is the right location this is what we're here for to debate it that's why we're going to do it so I'm going to ask members if they indicate they wish to speak I've got Councillor Forbes coming up you can speak, Councillor Forbes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I see this application is for three permanent sited holiday lets in an area of outstanding natural beauty. So I just have a few questions, if I can, for the officers. I put down here, how would a site be managed day to day? They will have mains, waters and electric supplies, but can I be told what utility would be available for cooking, please? I was going to ask about refuse, but I see that they, they would each let will have a, a bin inside the pod. But how would the refuse be stored on the site? And the collection, as it won't, as it be a private company, would there be a condition on what time they can start collecting? Because where I come from, they used to have collections at four and five o'clock in the morning from private companies, and I'm sure the locals wouldn't want that. I see there are three parking spaces at the main entrance. Will there be any at the side of each of the lets? Because I cannot see people walking to and from the lets, and that includes the staff, especially at night. Because when I looked at the site, I wouldn't like to walk up there. I see there are no ejections from the fire brigade, but there is a report from the water and access manager, which is the fire brigade. In it, it says, which is on page 35, the nearest fire hydrant to the proposed site is 780 metres away, which is 670 metres more than the required 90 metres distance for commercial property. And they also go on to say, from what they can see of the plans, which is the, the entrance will not be wide enough for a fire appliance to gain access to the site. Um, so I'm a bit confused with... Quite a fire brigade of getting no report. 
And I just um, don't think this has anything to do with this, but um, I did notice from the government that they are giving farmers are being paid to restore their land to natural habitats. I just thought it strange that here we are looking at an application to put permanent sites on the natural. Um, that's all I wanted. Uh, hopefully, I'll get answered to the questions. Please. There was a lot of questions there, so can I ask Mr. King to, if you'd like to answer some of those, please? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll start with the, the last one and go through them. Uh, in terms of the comments from the um, Sussex County Council uh, Water and Access Manager, Fire and Rescue Services, that, that's it. All, all one and the same thing. There for advice, and that's set out um, on page 29 of the report, um, but that's for the applicant's information, and um, those matters would be dealt with um, under under the building regs. It would be for the applicant to to address to address that under under building regs rather than through planning. Um, Is that the water the fire brigade? Yeah, yeah West Sussex County. Rescue services. Um, in terms of utilities, again, provision of um, infrastructure such as the electric and a, and a surface water supply, um, a water supply. Again, that's not um, for their planning application. Um, that, that's not something that's before the, the members uh, of this committee to, to be determined. Um, so that's that's not. Uh, planning issue. Again, that's set out on page uh, 29 of the, the committee report. Um, refuse, we, we did have an update on, on that that was in the um, update sheet. Um, in theory, I think you could have a condition regarding the, the times of collection or excluding particular hours, um, particularly un, unsociable hours. Um, there isn't parking um, proposed for the uh, pods up at the, the northern end of the site. The parking is um, intended to be at the, at the southern end of the site. So people um, would walk up, up there. It took me, it took me about five minutes from, from here to, to walking up at a, a normal, uh, normal pace. Well, the management site again. That's not a. Uh, it's not a requirement of any any policies that we have in the in the development plan, um, in terms of um, the management of the site. That is that's for the for the applicant. Um, as we've said, that there wouldn't be any permanent on-site presence for um, any, someone on the site. Um, we have granted consents for other uh, glamping pods, etc in the district and, and there aren't conditions regarding uh, management plans, management statements, etc. with those. Um, and as I say, it's, it's not a requirement of, of planning policy. Uh, it's really up, up to the applicant how he manages his business. Uh, I think that's those are the questions, Chairman. I think what Councillor uh, Falls was, uh, was there's nothing to stop people driving up that track. So if you if you had a you know, four by four, for example, you could drive up there. Yes. Oh, oh. Councillor Forbes, are you satisfied with the Sorry, uh, that's what I was getting at. driving up there at night, couldn't you? And I couldn't see you walking up there. If you've been out to the pub, come back and park your car by the side, right down there. I'm not gonna see um, you walking up there. And if you move in, I can't see you walking up there with all your... With, I presume you're going to have cases or something if you're going to stay for more than a few days. And the reason I asked about cooking, it does, it, it does matter if, if, for instance, it's a colour gas. Because there's a big difference if you're going to have a colour gas inside a wooden structure and where the fire brigade can't reach it. Uh, can I... I don't know if this is going to be for the officer or... for. The new 
regulations that are coming out of central government post Grenfell, the emphasis is now on councils when they grant permission that they're adequate um, for water fire brigade could actually is that in yet do you know if it's in i know it's i don't know if it's a, a white paper and it's coming in but i do know i've heard about it i think chairman we are verging on building control matters so that, building control yeah. fine okay that's fine by me okay um though you've seen list of things coming up um i don't necessarily want to I can take it in that order, but they're, they're coming and going like <laughs> flashing around. So I did see Councillor De Bell at one point. I, I thought that'd be a... Okay. Um, I'll come back in if I'm right. Okay, you can. Councillor Phillips? Touch it. Just don't touch it again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, uh, sorry, just to clarify, are we saying that it isn't a planning matter? that the, um, there isn't sufficient water supply uh, to the site. Because as someone who's done quite a lot of camping over the year and years and still does once a year for a music festival, even on sites that are managed um, where there is a condition that there should not be fires, people do start fires, and more often than, and quite often the fire brigade get called out to them. And it, it, it is a concern to me that even though there is, that there, and especially as the site isn't managed, that uh, there would be a, quite a high fire risk there. There's nothing to stop somebody having a barbecue. That's what you're trying to say, is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, Councillor Eggleston, could you just, oh yeah, you're live yes, now. Yes, um, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the gentleman speaking in favour of the proposal uh, referred to uh, Chidding Lye. Of course, Chidding Lye is a working farm. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, with a farm shop. And I think the difference between Chidding Lye and this application, of course, is that this site isn't used at all. Now, had, it, had this site been, I know we don't like talking in terms of hypotheticals, but had this site been a, an actively managed working farm, I think it would be very difficult to do anything other than support the officer's recommendations. But I've not heard anything so far um, that leads me, that convinces me uh, that approving this application would be the right thing to do. And my starting point, and I know people have looked at some of the, the details about um, fires and emptying the bins and so on. I think my starting point is DP19, sustainable tourism. Yeah. And we talk about in, you know, in rural areas, it will be permitted, providing it su supports the sustainable growth of the rural economy. And I just cannot see in any way that three glamping pods uh, in this part of Bolney uh, is supporting the sustainable growth of the rural economy. If it was a working farm, then you could easily argue that by uh, diversifying uh, your activities on the farm, then you were making that farm more sustainable. But there's absolutely no way, in my view, that you can, you can make that case uh, for this particular application. Uh, I then look at uh, DP26 in, in design terms. I mean, um, glamping pods are what they are. Um, so, you know, so the, you know, the design is average because, you know, they are, and I apologise to um, the, 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 the uh, member of the public uh, speaking in for the applicant, but they are, you know, posh sheds, really. Um, so they don't really add to um, the, you know, the what is, you know, an area of outstanding natural beauty and I was up there uh, today to have a look, and it is outstandingly natural and beautiful. Um, and I don't think this design, notwithstanding the fact that they are set uh, you know, well back, but they are st set at an uh, elevated point, um, adds to the character of the area. So again, I'm not convinced that it meets DP19. I'm not convinced that it meets DP26 either. Um, and I do think that in terms of applications in 
areas of outstanding natural beauty. Our bar has to be higher than elsewhere. Um, and I don't think, in, in terms of this application, you know, on policy grounds, uh, that it, it clears the bar. So I'm going to put my cards on the table and say at the outside that I do not support this application. Thank you, Councillor Edgerson. My Vice Chairman, Councillor Coote. Um, thank you, Chairman. I have a number of points, and I'll keep them brief. I agree with what has been previously said. Um, I've been a councillor for over 20 years, and I know that I'm going to be told that it's not something you can take into consideration. But this is the principle of development. And once, if we were to give permission for these three pods, with concrete bases, they're not yurts, which are set on the ground, they are proper dwellings. They're not even shepherd's huts, which are on wheels and are movable. They are a, a, a fixed structure. And that gives me a, a, a very uncomfortable feeling for the future. Secondly, three pods is not an economical number because you are going to have to have staff to change sheets, do various clean between um, occupation and um, three pods doesn't, doesn't, doesn't stack up. Of course, then you could say, well, we need more pods because it's not working, and then we need a manager's house uh, because somebody's got to be on site, which is something we've dealt with in the, pre, in the past. I noticed, Chairman, you said barbecues. Well, we've got terrible fire risks at the moment. Uh, last summer, Ashdown Forest, a lot of it was on fire when it's dry, and there's no way that you can get a fire engine up there or any vehicle with the tank to, to spray water. Um, I just have a very uncomfortable feeling about this, and um, as the previous council said, I'm afraid I can't support this. Okay. Well, I think this brings us to the point where I'm going to ask the next... Harman, <laughs> Councillor Spetman. Spetman, if you'd like to speak next. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I'll be brief because uh, I, I tend to agree what's already been said, especially from the Vice Chair. Um, these are basically um, permanent structures on the AONB. Um, um, a little bit, I know they've got boundary treatments proposed around the clamping pods, but uh, this is also a dark sky environment. So that leads me on to is that there is no on-site supervision. So, you know, they can virtually do what they like, virtually to a certain extent, un un unsupervised, and, and, that, and that does worry me. Uh, we, we talk about in... You know, in paragraph 38 of the MPPF, that um, secure developments that will improve the economic, social, environmental conditions on the area. Uh, I don't think that applies to, to this one because um, on the economic point of view with you know, tourism enhancing the economy, you've got six people there and the facilities are probably more than a mile away. So in this instance, I think the harm outweighs the benefits on, on, on this occasion. Um, going back to the uh, people mentioned about the Fire and Rescue Service um, accessing the property, when this I got a Land Rover with 150 gallons water tank on it, they're not going to get there. And of course there's the, the winter situation uh, because it doesn't really show it on the screen but if you go there, it's very, very high. And you've got three pods sitting up there. And it's just the impact on the OMB. I'm just not happy with this one. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cartwright. I think my points have largely been picked up by everyone that's gone before me. But I, I do feel that we're dealing with an area of outstanding natural beauty. And I think we have to think very hard before we build up new buildings on there uh, in an open uh, and uh, obvious position. Uh, if it was a camping site or a caravan site, 
we would expect it to be well hidden away and out of public view. Um, and of course, as people have said, um, there is no management over what people get up to there. Um, and all, um, having been bought a telescope for Christmas, I'd become much more aware of dark sites and uh, they're very welcome things too. So uh, there are so many good reasons. And I think it's on the sort of borderline. And in this case, it tips, from my point of view, very much into the no rather than the yes category. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Paul Fur. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, whilst I see the unique selling point of the proposer, and I think some of this could be an absolute delight. You could also take your own uh, fire pit up there, and, and how good would that be? However, I do not necessarily see that this will support the local economy. Um, I'm concerned that they're permanent foundations, and if, uh, if we were looking at houses there with permanent house, um, permanent foundations, I'm assuming that it would be declined. Um, the proposer also said that it had been designed to give the least impact. What I would suggest we need is no impact. Uh, and so, Mr Chairman, I would suggest that this is um, it's going to bring nothing to the local economy and it's unacceptable commercial development within, in an area of ANOB. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? Do you have anything that I want to ask and say? Said, said and done. Well, it's my turn now. <laughs> um, I, I, I fully hear what you're all saying, and, um, and I have total sympathy because I actually think along the same lines. The question you've got to take is remove the word glamping from the headlines, and would we allow three permanent structures in an area of outstanding natural beauty? And the answer would be absolutely no way. This is going to have water piped to it. This is going to have uh, sewage piped away. This is going to have electricity piped to it, and uh, all without no supervision. So we would not allow that in the area of outstanding natural beauty. And I'm really pleased that members took the time to go to this place because we do have areas of outstanding natural beauty, but it's almost this is special. This bit is, you know, we are so, we are lucky in this district to have some superb areas of outstanding natural beauty, and this is one of those. And um, so I hear what you're all saying. I did have a few more things to say, but I won't because there's no point because you said it all. Um, so the recommendation is to approve. Now, before we take that recommendation, is, uh, do I have a motion to refuse? Because that's what I'm hearing from. Refuse to refuse, uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Eggleston. Uh, and we're going to refuse it on... It is not a, um, um, doesn't enhance the um, air of outstanding natural beauty, but it's more to the detriment of air of outstanding natural beauty. Do you wish to, we put some words together later, or are you happy with that reason? Yes, yeah, yes, of course, yes, yeah, of course, the king. There hey, Chairman. Yeah, very briefly, just to come out on a couple of points. Um, a point was made about um, precedent, and obviously the committee have only must look at the application that's before them. It, you know, for argument's sake, were this to be approved, any future application that came before the, um, the council would have to be assessed on its individual merits, etc., etc. So, just want to clear for, for everyone and for the applicant's benefit that we're just looking at this on its own individual merits. Um, it is an attractive, very attractive part of the countryside in the AOMB um, and if it's the committee's view that the application doesn't um, conserve or enhance the, the AOMB, uh, that's a perfectly legitimate uh, position to take. That's a matter of judgment. Um, so I think if that is the, the reason for refusal, the, the detailed wording of that can be left. But okay, can I also, um, Council Eggleston, you second it. You, you mentioned uh, DP19 about the sustainable tourism and the economic benefits that this particular site, not all glamping, but this particular site, you want that included in the, if the members are to, to agree with that? Do you want? Yes, please, Chairman. As well. Uh, because it doesn't support sustain sustainable growth 
and vitality of the rural economy and where possible utilises previously developed sites. Okay, thank you. Um, Chairman, uh, just in terms of that issue, I understand what's been said about um, the sustainability or otherwise of the site because of where it is, but by definition, um, these types of activities will be in the countryside where you rely on the car, etc. And uh, as has been mentioned, we have, as a planning authority, approved other applications um, in similar countryside locations where you are entirely reliant on the car. So I think in terms of a reason for refusal that we could um, justify uh, and, and defend where the applicants to launch an appeal, um, which of course they're entitled to do so, I think we would be on firmer ground um, sticking with just impact on the A and B. That would be my advice. Okay. Uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Eggleston has withdrawn that part of the thing. So we now come to the vote. The vote is to refuse this application on the landscape harm that this application does to the area of outstanding natural beauty, and we're only going to be voting on that, not the other bits. Okay, so as before, we haven't got, we're not going with the recommendation. This is purely to refuse. So if you support the reasons to refuse, it's the green. If you don't support the reasons to refuse, it's red. And if you wish to abstain, it's yellow. Okay, um, right, Zach, could you read out the uh, result of that, please? Actually, one of us hasn't voted. For you. We then... I do think we... Do I still have to... That's a, Need to do that again, Tom. To do it again, then, please. I know it's. Uh, yeah, don't hit it with a hammer, though, Neville. <laughs> okay, good. It's clear again. So can we press again, please? Got eleven now. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. That's 11 in favour. It's unanimous. Okay, so this application has been refused unanimously. Thank you very much. Excellent. Now we're going to take a short recess while we change officers. Officers changing? No, officers are still still here. We've now got some coming. Thank you very much for your attendance. Um, we will have a few seconds. If people wish to avail themselves, please do. Here's one.
agenda is DM 212992, 78 London Road, East Grinstead. And again, this is Mr King, so could you uh, go for your presentation, please? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a couple of updates that are on the sheet. Amendments to uh, conditions, uh, materials, and the construction management plan. Um, the reason being is that we've already we've had the details of those submitted by the applicant now, and um, we're satisfied with, with both of those uh, following consultation with the um, conservation officer, read the materials, and... Uh, Highway Authority and the Environmental Protection Team read the construction management plan, so there's no need to <coughs> submit those, those details. So I'll, I'll be quite uh, brief on this one. So the application seeks planning permission for the conversion of the um, upper floors, first and second floors of 78 London Road in East Grinstead to provide uh, 10 flats, two one bed and eight two bed properties. So this is the site um, outlined in red here on the screen on the corner of uh, London Road and Queen's Road. It comprises a part two-storey at, at the frontage and part three-storey building. Uh, the ground floor, as members are probably aware, is used by uh, Superdrug. It's in retail use. And the upper floors are, are vacant um, retail. Uh, the uh, main shopping area on the on the London Road uh, to the north, a mixture of two and three storey buildings around the site, uh, residential flats um, down Queen's Road and residential properties again as the land falls away on Delaware Gardens. Uh, just a little bit more detail. So again, that, that's the application site. And there's a, there's a yard area that we see on the photographs at the, at the back of the site here. And it's just mentioned in the committee report that the um, front part of the adjoining uh, Royal Mail delivery office to the southeast there is a grade two listed building. Uh, the history on this one's quite important. That's dealt with on page 41 of the report. And you'll see that Planning permission was resolved to be approved at committee on the 13th of September 2018 for the uh, demolition of the first and second floors and the erection of 11 flats on the site. Uh, following a, a, a lengthy process with the legal agreement, that permission was issued in February 2020. So that permission is um, extant and could be implemented. Uh, so it's important for the committee to recognise that, that the principle of development on this site has been accepted. And I've, I've got the slides that show that scheme, which is a, a larger development than is proposed now. So very briefly, these are the existing uh, ground floor and ground floor plan at the top and basement plan. So you can see Superdrug um, with its exist access on to the uh, London Road. Access at, at the back um, to the basement areas and access uh, to the upper floors. Existing first floor and uh, second floor plans. At the moment it's uh, vacant. Proposed plan, uh, the uh, ground floor plan remains pretty much the same for, for Superdrug, uh, no change. In terms of the basement areas, that's where the cycle and, and bin stores uh, would be located, accessed uh, via the yard at, at the back. Post uh, first floor and second floor plans. So that's the, the access, the stairs, and then uh, the corridors, providing uh, access to the flats. Existing and proposed roof plans, so uh, remodelling of the roof and the simplification of the, of the roof form. So that's the proposed roof plan at, at the bottom. Quite a, a, a mix of uh, bits and pieces on the existing roof. So these are the existing and proposed uh, southeast elevation uh, when viewed from Queen's Road. So it's an existing on the top and proposed on the bottom. The dotted line represents the um, previous 
approval, so the extent scheme, so that was a larger development. Again, existing and proposed elevations uh, from <coughs> Delaware Gardens side, so that's existing, so that's proposed. And this is from the frontage, so from the London Road, so that's existing. And again, proposed, so a change to the, the roof form there. These are the uh, extant planning commission. Uh, so again, this is what at the bottom has been approved previously in, in that uh, 2013 planning commission. Um, so a, a bigger development, but that is what could be built as an alternative uh, to this. Again, elevations of the uh, extant commission uh, from, the other, from the other side. So again, as you can see, what was previously approved, uh, but a larger uh, development on the site. Just some photos, I'm sure members are, are very familiar uh, with the site, so that's just taken across looking at, at Superdrug. Uh, so that, that's the second <coughs> floors. That's, uh, that, so that's a listed building. These are from uh, the back of the site, so this is the, the yard area. set out in the committee report and I'll come to it. This is a car-free scheme, um, again, exactly the same as was proposed before, um, but with this unit. Um, and that's, that's a view looking down Queen's Road again at the uh, existing building. And that's a view of the and a view down uh, Delaware Gardens, so the, the yard was, was just in there. Um, the issues are as set out in the committee report, so again, I won't labour them in great detail. Uh, the principle has been accepted by virtue of the previous uh, planning permission. It's within the built-up area, um, so the principle is accepted. In terms of the design and impact on the setting of the listed building, that's dealt with on page 48 of the committee report. Uh, we think that the setting of that listed building will be preserved uh, and the design uh, is acceptable. Um, just mentioned highways have had previous scheme approved with no car parking for 11 units. Um, this, is, this is for 10, so again, in, in principle, that's been accepted by the, by the planning committee. Um, all the other issues are set out in the committee report, so on that basis, um, the application is recommended for approval, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr King. Uh, we do have a speaker. It's uh, speaking in support. It's Jackie Andrew Andrews. Thank you. start to speak, the green light will come on, you'll have two minutes. After 90 seconds, it will change from green to amber, and when it, after another 30 seconds, it will turn to red, and then I'll ask you to <laughs> conclude within a minute, uh, within a sentence, sorry, not a minute. The time will start the moment you start to speak. Well, good afternoon, Chair and Councillors. This proposal comes before members with an officer recommendation for approval subject to appropriate conditions and the signing of a Section 106 agreement addressing the Samsung and infrastructure contributions. This agreement is in place and awaiting finalisation following members' decision today. The building has been subject to numerous consents for residential conversion and extensions, including an extant consent for three new floors of accommodation above the existing basement and ground floor retail unit. Unfortunately, that scheme involves extensive works giving rise to viability issues. So this revised proposal limits intervention of the existing built fabric through conversion of the redundant vacant upper two floors with related small extensions providing 10 flats with the retention of the retail unit. This highly sustainable located brownfield site lies outside the East Grinstead conservation area. East Grinstead is a Category 1 settlement where Mid-Sussex District Plan Policy DP6 expects the majority of housing to be, uh, to be provided. The principle of the site's residential redevelopment has already been accepted under policies DP4 and DP6 and the Neighbourhood Plan Policy EG5. The extant scheme is overall larger in scale. This revision looks to improve the building's visual qualities by introducing more simplicity and uniformity to the building, described by the Conservation Officer as fairly nondescript. The design also ensures listed building settings are protected, no significant harm arises to neighbouring privacy, national housing standards are met or exceeded, and relevant building and fire regulations addressed. 
20 accessible and secure cycle spaces are provided for residents, allowing a car-free development similar to former schemes and consistent with town centre policy. The revised proposal positively responds to all relevant planning policy as comprehensively set out within the officer's report and provides sought after new homes. The professional views of the officers are accordingly relied on by the applicant <coughs> in commending this scheme to you, enabling the presumption in favour of this sustainable development to be applied and planning permission granted. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, um, members, the whole basis of today here now has it you've heard is it already has extant permission is this scheme better than the last scheme so I'm going to ask the two members from um, East Grinton to speak first so can I ask uh, Councillor DeBell to speak first please thank you very much indeed Mr Chairman uh, I'm extremely concerned about this uh, for a number of reasons um, it's been strongly recommended for refusal as overdevelopment uh, which because it's not supported by DP26 and EG3 of the Neighbourhood Plan. Um, the original planning permission that was granted was for seven new flats, um, which again was opposed at local level. It was three one-bed and four two-bed. Now uh, it's for two one-bed and eight two-bed flats. Uh, it, it seems to be growing up like topsy. And um, there's also going to be the loss of um, uh, a large part of the retail unit uh, and the loss of the feature windows um, at the front of the property. Um, these buildings just seem to be getting higher and higher. And for that reason, um, I, I, I don't feel that I can support this. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, I thought this scheme was lower. Could you just answer that one, please? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. The, the history is on page 41 of the report. Um, and this is right, the first application was for, for seven uh, flats. That was in March 2016. But the latest um, consent that was approved or resolved to approve in 2018 and then actually approved in February uh, was for 11 flats. So there is an extant planning permission for 11 flats on the site with the the larger development that I've highlighted on the slides. Thank you. I thought it was smaller. I thought, <laughs> I think it was, I'm watching the same one as you were. Um, Councillor Sweatman. <coughs> right, uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, so I think we can see from there that the extent permission which could go ahead is uh, slightly, oh, well, it's higher than the one that is proposed today. Um, it seems that the, the roof um, modelling I did that quite, quite a lot uh, to make it more uh, attractive. I've, as you can see, there's a stepped approach from the London Road going back towards uh, Delaware Gardens, which actually tidies it up quite a bit. Quite pleased about is obviously that super drug is, is staying there. And I think um, what I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, is that when this come up quite some time ago, I think Superdrug were quite happy to have a smaller space because uh, it's more viable for them financially uh, because the, the, um, they, they didn't need all that space and understand there's a ground floor flat going down at the back of... of, of I was concerned about the height of buildings having an impact on St Swithin's Church. I don't think it, that is... So, in this case, I don't think it's any higher in the uh, flats <coughs> opposite Delaware Gardens and the actual post office. So, <coughs> I think this application uh, tidies it up uh, quite a bit. Um, obviously, is um, provides needed uh, accommodation. So, um, I'm, I'm fully in support of this application. Thank you, I think you're correct because I, I, I saw Councillor Walker nodding because I, I remember this as Councillor Walker does and so does Councillor Cook. I think we gave permission well, a couple of times because we've been around a bit longer. Um, my Vice Chairman. Um, I was just going to move as recommended, Chairman. Okay, well, before you do that, Councillor Walker. <laughs> well, he, he's 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr Chairman. I fully support what Councillor Sapswetman said. Uh, the last thing we want, I'm looking at it from my scrutiny of the Chairman, economic development, is to lose a super drug in East Grinstead. We've lost enough problem of little retail shops like that. The fact is it's a vi question of viability in that they can manage quite well with a smaller thing. And if we do this development, it will probably close and we'll probably get the whole lot knocked down and a massive block of flats. So I would support Councillor Coote's recommendation. To You'll second this. that, would you? Yeah, you'll second that. Okay, can I ask the officers to... We have a new gizmo thing. Yep, there's your recommendations. The recommendation A, I won't read it, you can... Sneaked in. Sorry. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> a, a, a late entrant, Mr Chairman, so thank you. Um, given that it's already been approved in, in different forms, it's a, as I see, it's a re reallocation and rearrangement of the deck chairs. Um, but two things I, I would like to ask, though, is um, might the heating be environmentally friendly? Is there any support for that from the proposers? And visitors parking always, uh, think, because I'm assuming people do have visitors. I know it's, we haven't had any for two years, but, you know, we're always hoping now. Um, and I note there's a big car park across the road, so presumably there will be parking in there. Or is it, as it's discussed in here, going to be conditional that the owners do not have cars? Thank you, Mr Chairman. I think it's buyer beware. We've, we've had a number of these in Hayworth Heath and in East Grinstead over the years. Um, when it's a town centre location, in, and you, you're quite right, you've got Queen's Road Car Park, the busiest car park in um, Mid-Sussex, uh, and there's a number of other car parks in the locality there, um, Kings Road uh, and Chancellor. There's lots of car parking in that area. Um, as was the one down in Haywards Heath. You, you've had the, the big one in Haywards Heath. So, yeah, it's by everywhere. We, people who, who are going to live in a flats uh, in, a, in a town centre, you would expect to have a car if you lived in London, in a block of flats right in the centre of London. Well, you could, but you'd pay for, the, <laughs> pay for it. Um, but what is welcoming them is the fact there are, you know, cycle um, shed, there's 20 bikes in a secure... I assume it's going into that area at the back, yeah? Yeah, that's right. OK, so in light of nobody else... Oh, where you mind, Councillor Paul, you can come back again, please. Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, the heating, yes. I, the, the heating, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure uh, Mr King will comment on that or make uh, appropriate overtures to the developers. Um, but I was thinking more that, of course, there are certain blocks flats in Brighton where it's conditional that the owner will not... Oh. We can't enforce the fact that they don't have a car, but if they want to pay for the use of our car parks during the hours of uh, when our car parking charges are in, then it's economic development for the council as well. So, um, the recommendations are in front of you, or behind me, depends which way you're facing. I, I don't propose to read them out. I've had a proposer and a seconder. Can I ask you now to vote, please? Thank you. As before, green if you support, red if you don't, and um, yellow if you abstain. I've got 11. Zach, could you read out the... Um... Thank you, Chairman. That's 10 in favour and one against. That application has been approved. Thank you very much. Just a very short recess while... Um, move people in and out. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attendance. charging them for doing all this. <laughs> this is yours anyway.
Item uh, 7, again in East Grinstead, as DM 213534, Tower Car Sales, Tower Close, East Grinstead. It's a, those who have been around for a while know this one very well. Mr King, this is actually yours, this one. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so, yes, Tower, Tower Car Sales, Tower Close, East Grinstead. Um, the application seeks planning permission for the demolition of the existing buildings on the site and the erection of a block containing um, a total of nine flats. So this is the application site here, um, outlined in red on the plan. The site's described on page 81 of the, of the committee report, um, but it's in the built-up area of East Grinstead. Um, Single-storey buildings on the south east side of the site and then the remainder of the site is all given over um, to hard standing. And it used to accommodate a car sales uh, business that has um, left the site several years ago. Um, to the uh, northeast, they've got Tower Court, a um, block of uh, two storeys in height. To the northwest, um, we've got more, more modern flats, larger in scale, uh, three, four storey uh, buildings there. Uh, to the southwest, got the Mid Sussex District Council car park. Got the um, entrance to Aldi's uh, car park here, and Aldi's just off the off the plan. And then uh, detached and semi-detached houses on Moat Road uh, to the south east. There's a very extensive um, planning history on the site. Um, it's on page 80 of the committee report. Um, planning permission was granted here for residential development in 2017, um, but that has now lapsed, so there's no um, extent planning permissions on this one. And you'll see that there have been a number of applications um, that have been refused. Uh, they've had two refusals that have been dismissed at appeal, and there's a further um, appeal on the site that is, that is ongoing. So in a bit more uh, detail, this is the proposed site layout. So as I say, it's intended to demolish all the buildings on the site and erect a, a new building that would cover the majority of the site. Access from Tower Close um, to an undercroft area. Uh, our parking provided on the side here um, for eight, eight spaces. One flat on the ground floor level, and that would uh, benefit from um, the garden and the dog leg round the, the site. So it's orientated a different way, this plan. So this area here is the um, Mid-Sussex um, car park that's referred to. And these are the semi-detached houses on um, Moat Road. In access um, in, in, into the site um, through here into the into the uh, stairway um, and you've also got access um, available there yeah. proposed ground floor plan in a little more uh, detail so that's the uh, ground floor flat the undercroft area proposed car parking on on the ground floor Entrance um, into the into the site, uh, pedestrian entrance through here, into the stair stairway, um, cycle store and, and refuse store here, it's accessed um, from the gate onto um, tower close. Proposed first floor plan, um, number number of flats there. The windows, and we'll see these on the elevations. So these windows, are the ones that face onto. Um, Moat Road, they would be um, high level, so they wouldn't be um, overlooking possible from, from those, those windows. And this one here is high level and also obscure glazed, so that's the one that serves the, the stairway. And proposed uh, second floor plan, same arrangement with um, high level windows uh, facing towards Moat Road, so no, no overlooking. So it's, um, let's say, nine flats, five one bed, three two bed, and one um, three bed. In terms of the um, elevations, 
These are the proposed uh, northeast and, and northwest. So this is what you um, see from uh, Tower Close. So that's the that's the Endercroft, and that's the opposite elevation. What you'd see from um, the car park. You see that the upper floors of the building are stepped back to uh, reduce the impact on the properties on Moat Road. So you see that the step back, and I'll refer to that later in the report. So external materials, brick and uh, timber, timber cladding. These are the other elevations, so the southeast. So this is what you'd see if you're in the, in the back gardens of, of Moat Road, the upper floors set back, as I've referred to on the floor plan, high level windows, so no overlooking possible from, from those windows. And these are uh, skewed glazed. And that's the, that's the other elevation uh, from the, the southwest. So a section that, that um, is there to indicate um, that there wouldn't be a, a loss of um, direct daylight to the um, properties on Moat Road. So you can see that the step back that was, that was shown, that's a 25 degree line drawn from the centre of a ground floor window. And I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that. Just some photos of the site. Um, so this is the um, various views of, of the site. There was a, a, a temporary car wash operating from the site, but um, that's that's uh, of no relevance to the determination of, of this application. So that's a view from the council car park um, looking towards towards the site. That's a view from from Tower Close looking towards the site. Council car park in the background. You can see the single story buildings and the heart standing. Um, again, those are the single story buildings that would be demolished. Views from around, around the site. So, this is again from the council car park. These are properties on Moat Road. So, it gives you an idea of the, the scale of the, of the properties. So, if I go back to the um, Issues are as, as they're set out in the report. Print in terms of principle, that's page 85. It's your officer's view that this is acceptable in principle. Uh, the benefits of uh, the uh, application in terms of residential scheme in a sustainable location outweighs the loss of the business floor space. And of course, there has been a previous planning permission for residential, albeit that's now lapsed. In terms of the design, uh, that's dealt with on page 86. It's uh, again your officer's view that this is now a well designed scheme that does make uh, good use of the site. The layout has overcome the previous reasons for refusal. Um, just on the previous schemes, you had ground floor flats with habitable rooms facing out onto the, the undercroft, and, and that was um, a problem. A concern and that the external elevations weren't um, as ordered as they were now and weren't as rationalised. So, as the officer's view, this is a much better scheme, and that's um, also the view of the um, council's urban designer. Um, in terms of sustainable design, uh, that is proposed that there would be EV charging points on uh, for these um, car parking spaces, and there would be PV panels on the roof, but the other aspects of sustainable design are dealt with in the committee report. Key issue on this one is the uh, impact on the neighbours, particularly those on Moat Road, and that's dealt with on page 90 of the committee report and the various setback distances, etc. Uh, but it's your officer's view now that um, the proposal wouldn't cause significant harm to, to their amenities and wouldn't justify a refusal on those grounds. Uh, noise is dealt with on page 92 of the committee report. Um, and in terms of transport, that's page 93. Um, highway authority is satisfied that the access would be, would be safe. And in terms of car parking, uh, we're content that um, this is an appropriate level of car parking for this, this um, town centre site. And it's also worth noting that um, 
the previous applications, although there have been a number of refusals, none of them have been related to the, the level of car parking uh, proposed on the site. Uh, and on that basis, officers feel their uh, principle is acceptable. This scheme has overcome uh, the reasons for refusal of the uh, three previous refuse scheme, and uh, therefore the application is recommended for approval, Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. King. We do have a speaker. It's um, Mr. John Escott. You're speaking in support of the allocation. You heard what I said before. Do you wish me to remind you of how the traffic lights are? Fine, OK. As soon as you start to speak, two minutes will start. I think you Yep, you've done it. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Good afternoon, members. Um, as the officers have explained, uh, this is a highly sustainable and um, accessible location on the edge of uh, East Rinsett Town Centre. Um, you did say, Chairman, you're all very familiar with it and uh, have indeed been a number of schemes uh, in the past. The Council, of course, has previously accepted the principle uh, of residential development here. Nin uh, 2015, a three-storey building with seven uh, apartments. Subsequent permission in 2017, Mr King made reference to, was for a scheme of three houses and two apartments. Now, the current application has been the subject of lengthy discussion and negotiation with your officers, uh, and in particular with your urban designer, uh, and I've been asked by the applicant to express their thanks for their time and effort uh, in that regard. The detailed issues which were identified in relation to the previous proposals, concerning the layout, the outlook, from certain of the flats and the impact on the moat road houses have all been addressed through this current design. The reason why the original planning permissions were not implemented and why the current design has been a challenge to get right has been the presence of some uh, fairly heavy duty underground cables uh, that go through the site. Uh, a build over agreement has been reached but the undercroft has had to be designed into the scheme to enable access uh, in an emergency to those uh, cables. So the current scheme is set back further from Moat Road uh, than the previously approved schemes. There are a number of planning benefits that would accrue from the scheme, uh, full electric heating, um, PV panels, uh, full uh, electric vehicle charging points to all of the spaces. We're trying to make this a sustainable um, uh, development uh, as much as we can and the officer's report does explain how those issues have all been addressed. And I would commend the recommendation, therefore, Chairman, to uh, the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Escort. Um, we have one speaker so far. Uh, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, a question, really. Um, I was interested in the uh, car parking in the undercroft and why this... Uh, <clears throat> this development uh, was not a, a car-free development. I think I probably just had a sort of an answer about that, something to do with cables. I was wondering um, what, uh, what, dr uh, what drives the decision-making or the advice from the uh, planning officers with regard to a car-free uh, development, uh, rather like the, the previous one we just discussed, uh, which, you know, which was car-free. Um, second point is I'm pleased to see I wondered what it was on the roof uh, and I'm very pleased to see uh, photovoltaic panels there and I'm also very pleased to see that the uh, parking uh, is although not uh, well it's not it's good that it's not a, part, a place for every car uh, but, and they are provided with uh, electric vehicle charging points thank you I can answer one of that <coughs> When we do our district plan, and I'm looking at the uh, chairman of the scrutiny committee here, we have designations. You have town centre. This is on the outskirts of the town centre. It's as far away as you could possibly get from the town centre, but beyond the boundaries of it. And that's why we would allow our scheme on this, where we wouldn't allow it further in towards the town centre. So you wouldn't expect to have town centre um, at that behind Queen's Walk there because that's right dead centre of the town centre and that's the reason why this you know, is, is degrees of how close you are to the town centre 
on that one. There was one other question. I think Mr. King better answer that one. In terms of um, the, the general question about car parking, see, on this site in particular, there is a uh, particular design challenge because of the underground cabling um, that, that's led to this um, undercroft solution. Um, but in general terms, it, it, the applicants would would come forward with a proposal and then the um, officers uh, would comment on, on that if, if it came at, uh, in as a pre-app as to whether that was acceptable or not. And in this case, for all the reasons that are in the committee report, we think the level of, of, of car parking um, is appropriate. There are parking restrictions around the site, so it's not possible to park in areas where it would be a problem in terms of highway safety. Um, and it does make... Uh, best use of, of the site, so we we think that on on this one the level of car parking is is appropriate, Chairman. Thank you. And the fact that it's got EV charging points and a secure cycling, they've ticked all the boxes that we would require of them to tick. Um, right. Last time there was a debate amongst you two. <laughs> Who wants to go first this time? <laughs> Councillor De Bell. Thank you. Um, I'm much encouraged. Uh, I've seen uh, a number of um, bad, uh, in, in my opinion, plans that have come forward, and, and I believe that the, um, uh, the applicant has thought carefully about this, and the officers have actually uh, made sure that, that it does meet the required standards, and it's, it's uh, a better design than we've seen before. And uh, my, only, my only remaining concern, I, I, I like the design, uh, but my only remaining concern would be to make sure that there was some gap or, or a pavement between the actual development and the, and the tower, you know, the, the leading up to, to Aldi Car Park. Um, but I'm glad to see that the, that the previous applications uh, and refusals have led to a better design. I, I do think the officers in this situation have got to be commended because they've obviously challenged the applicant yes. to get it right after the couple of times that... Uh, and I would like to hope that this development is the one which goes forward should they win their appeal, because I think this is a much better design. And regarding, what did you say, the gap? I think you said there's a gap you wanted. Well, I was thinking about a pavement between, you know, between the actual development and, and the uh, old. But I'm sure that there will be. <laughs> well, like the... um, Councillor Sweatman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Well, I won't go over what's been said. I mean, uh, the principle of development has already been established from the 2017 application. It's nice to see uh, we've only got one letter of support and one letter of objection, so that's not many in the grand scheme of things. And uh, I'm quite pleased that this site is, is, uh, has actually come to fruition. It's nice to see that the distances are, uh, are quite adequate. We approve those sort of distances a lot in our planning applications. And... Um, yeah, and it's nice to see that they've got solar PV panels on the roof, so that was sustainable energy. And um, I think someone might actually bring up the loss of daylight and sunlight. Well, you know, as it says in the report, that does not cross the 25 deg uh, degree line, so there's not an issue on, on that case. So I would support this application and recommend it for approval, Chairman. Thank you. Well, I agree with you there. Uh, and what is particularly pleasing, before I go to Councillor Walker, is that, you know, it's small units again, and it adds to our five-year land supply. So we, you know, we this is a brownfield site, and the government position on we will go to ground, brownfield before we go to green open space. Councillor Walker. Yeah, if you've got a red one now. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I fully agree with the, with the comments of my two fellow East Grinstead councillors. And, um, I mean, it's had a checkered career, this is, and anything on that site is better than what it is at the moment. It's a shambles. 
So I would be more than pleased that to, to move, suggest we move to the recommendation to approve this application. Thank you. Before I go to the, I, I have noticed that Councillor Polfer has indicated he wishes to speak. Uh, merely to uh, congratulate the developer on biting the bullet right up front by EV panels and charging points. I think it's probably the, one of the first ones we've seen with both box tickings, Chairman. I think uh, very much good to the uh, developer. Thank you. My Vice Chairman, Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, <coughs> well, I was going to recommend it, but uh, we've had a fir uh, first and a second. Uh, the only thing I would say is that um, <coughs> I well remember that when the supermarket that's built next door uh, was built, there were problems with contamination from, because it was an old gas site originally, and I just wondered whether anybody had done any research as to whether there was still any, any contamination on that condition. Contamination is a normal contamination condition. Check if there's a contamination condition. Councillor Swerman? Memory says been correct, Chairman. Yeah. ...thing was where the uh, tower closes. Yeah. I might be wrong there, but I think that's the case. No, I, yeah. I, I think uh, Councillor Swerman is correct, but there were ancillary units uh, to... It's just to, it's it's just to it, make we sure... We do have a normal... You know, you're halfway down. Conditions, conditions, condition four, four, five, condition five. Four. <coughs> conditions four and might five. Might have natural gas then. Four and five. I do recall when we actually gave permission for an Audi, there was outcry. Now look at it. One of the most successful Audi stalls in the country. But uh, anyway, um, I've got no more wish to speak. I've had a proposal in the second. There's Councillor Walker, Councillor Polford. Did you? Yeah. Sorry, I should have gone to Winnie's Green. So I do apologise. Pass it to. Thank you. Well, you've already got one. You must be second in there. Right, the recommendations on the screen in front of me and behind me, I shan't propose to read it out. Can we have the screen up to vote, please? Thank you. Next before green for approving, uh, red to refuse. So we've got 11 now already. So can we go, Zach, could you um, read out the, the number, please? Come in. Technology is oh, a wonderful on thing. I'll tell you what. Oh, thank you, Chairman. It's behind you. Ah, oh, it's behind you. All right, okay. It's, um, it's unanimously for it. I could have said that from my screen, but uh, I believe oh. Lee. Oh, it's up there now. Thank you. So it's unanimously, this has been approved. Now, when we were going through our talks, we, we were doing good progress. Does anybody wish to carry on? Right, we'll carry on then. Oh, we've got an office saying. Oh, yes, we've, oh, yes. Are you doing the O2 one? No. I'll be back in a minute. All right, okay. Are you doing that one? Oh, Joe Smith. Cheerio. Cheerio, he'll be back in a minute. He's got the other two to do in Burgess Hill. Can we take a break? Yes, of course you can. Um, we have to go that way and then come back in that way. Thank you very much, Mr. Escort. Thank you. And can you pass?
which is DM 213607 Oat Hall Farm Shop, Oat Hall Farm, James Lane, Burgess Hill. Uh, we've had this before, and um, Mr. Swift, I think this is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll just take members for a couple of updates on the update sheet. We've received uh, additional comments from West Sussex Highways on the amended plans, and they've raised um, no objection in, in accordance with their original comments. And also, the Conservation Officer has provided additional comments, um, setting out that it is now more closely related to the previous approval. Um, the proposal will still cause less than substantial harm. However, this is somewhat reduced by the reduction in scale and more sympathetic design. And we've also received an additional letter of support for this application. Thank you. The application seeks planning permission for a farm shop and tea room at Oak Hall Farm to the north of James Lane. Um, permission has previously been granted at committee for a larger um, farm shop. Um, however, as set out within the applicant's current letter, due to the rising cost of materials, the building has been reduced in size to make it more affordable to build. The application site you can see here is outlined in red. Um, we have the properties <laughs> along James Lane to the west, some, exist, some existing farm buildings to the east, and the access road serving the Grade 1 listed building, Great Oat Hall, which is to the north. Layout of the proposal. It's fairly similar to what was previously approved with the car park to the front and the farm shop set to the rear. Here we can see the proposed elevations. As you can see on these plans, there is uh, dotted lines indicating the outline of the previous approval. Um, as you can see, it was uh, a lot wider and deeper and even slightly higher, the previous approval. And that's again shown on these plans as well with the dotted line. In context, we have some sections through the site. The first section is showing it in relation to uh, Great Oak Hall, which is set to the north. And the second section here, we can see it in relation to the agricultural buildings to the east. I have some photos from the site. The first one is from the existing access into the field, looking north. So here is looking west across the site, back towards the dwellings on James Lane. And the final two photos here, this one's looking south, back towards James Lane. And this is looking north towards the uh, Great Oak Hall. These photos here are from the Chains Lane itself, the first one looking west and the second one looking east across the frontage and the final two are looking across the field from Chains Lane. The main issues are set out in the report. Owing to, the, owing to the fact that this is a smaller proposal than the existing extant permission, um, combined with the public benefits associated with this proposal, which are considered to outweigh the harm to the setting of the listed building, it is therefore recommended for approval in accordance with the conditions set out in Appendix A and subject to the completion of the unilateral undertaking securing the travel plan monitoring fees. Um, we also have a recommendation B to refuse the application if the unilateral undertaking for the travel plan monitoring fees is not completed by the 13th of April 2022. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Swift, sorry. Uh, we do have a speaker. Um, please let me don't kill your name. Carola godman Irvine, is that correct? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. As soon as you start to speak, uh, your two minutes starts. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman, Councillors. I do not intend to rattle through the same presentation which I delivered in January last year. Those of you who were present were clearly fully supportive of the O'Toole Farm Shop and what we have decided to call the Country Kitchen. I therefore do not wish to take up too much of your time. However, I do wish you to know that today this project is increasingly important for the future of Great Oat Hall and Oat Hall Farm. The financial future of small family farms is increasingly uncertain, as I am sure that you are all fully aware. I would also like to reassure you that although we have had to reduce the size of the overall building due to the financial restraints and inflated build costs, this will not impact upon the look of the building. Smaller is still beautiful. I can promise you that the building will complement the entrance to Oat Hall, not detract from its historic, rustic and natural beauty. Also, the natural landscape, trees, hedges and surrounding area will not be damaged in any respect. We as a family and the many hundreds of local people who walk up our drive and around the farm for their daily exercise cannot wait for the farm shop and country kitchen to be up and running hopefully by the autumn, with your approval. Thank you in anticipation of your support. Thank you very much. I think we've only got one new member from January last time, and it was Councillor Brown. I, 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 you're quite right. I don't think we had a descending voice at all, but uh, Councillor Cora, as you um, voted yourself, would you like to make a comment on this? I would, yes. I'm well, still enthusiastic, and I think Good. it's been detracted by the replanning, a bit of belt tightening, but uh, a facility most welcome in that part of the world. Brilliant. Um, it's, it's, it's unusual. We have 20... We've had all these speakers, and we've got nobody speaking, nobody against it, and, and you've only had letters of support, which to me is, tells you this is much needed, and this is what we need. You know, we're a rural, despite what people say, we are a rural district. And um, a lot of farms haven't been diversified by these shops. And uh, my own farms and my own ward are, are all doing all this. Do you wish to say anything? Who is recommended? Who's recommended? Uh, Councillor Cartwright, would you like to second that? Yeah. OK, can I have the... Um, thank you. There's your recommendations. You heard uh, Mr. Smith read them out, so I won't read them out again. Can we go to the voting, please? I mean, I'm slow. <laughs> we um, back. I think we've all voted. I've got 11 in front of me. Thank you. Unanimous, thank you. Can't wait for you to build it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to do that now or wait when we do the changeover? We're waiting for. Um, oh, he's here. It's changeover now. <laughs> We're moving on to item nine, which is DM 214145. This is a, one of our major development sites, Crudos de, Crudes um, development site, former Kima Brick Tires, phase two, Nye Road, Burgess Hill. And this is Mr. Ashdown. No speakers. Thank you, 
you, Chairman. Um, the application is for a change of use of a, a small um, wedge of land on the Weald, the King's Weald development in Burgess Hill, which is the former um, King of Reconciled site. Um, the application site is this wedge edged in red. Um, it's before members today because it's actually owned by the District Council and is associated with the community building, which is outlined in blue here. So the change of use is from public open space, which was the previous, or, uh, as, as it was originally approved, uh, for, as a secure private space just for the use associated with the community building. So in terms of layout, um, in, ter in terms of, so the, the, the change of use is for the, sorry, the change of use is in relation to, to the area itself. This hasn't occurred yet, but it is part retrospective in respect of a new gateway has been created here and the area has been fenced. Um, while the area is fenced, the fencing, as you'll see in a minute in terms of the photos, is the same that's been used for the adjacent play area and the multi-use games area, which is here to the south. Uh, there is um, uh, appropriate native planting uh, along the, the main elevation here and, and within the actual um, area itself. So here's a couple of, um, couple of photos. Um, as you say, this is the area in question. Um, you can see the fencing, the native planting, which has taken place in front of it, a new gateway. Um, and again, this is the context with it in relation to the community building, which you can see in the distance. So I set out in the report, um, the, the use um, officers are content with the use. It's still in community use, although not public. It is solely for the use of the community, the community building. Um, in terms of visual amenity, um, then th there is very little difference to, to that which was originally approved, other than the fencing, which again matches in with that already adjacent. Mm -hmm. It's not considered, given the uses that would give rise to any um, issues in terms of residential amenity, given the adjacent play areas of either side. And it's on this basis, Chairman, that the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Mr. Lastone. Just to remind uh, anybody watching, the reason it's here is we actually own the site, and that's the reason we're here. Any other landowner, uh, it probably would have got a, a, you know, approved by powers, and it's the reason it is here. Um, do you wish to move, or do you wish to say anything? Move is recommended, Jim. I do need uh, uh, Councillor Eggleston and Councillor Cartwright, as you're both... You second that? Fine. Okay. Can we go... There's your recommendation in front of you. Um, can we go to the voting, please? We're very quick at this now, you know. <laughs> I think we've got 11 here in front. That's right, Chairman. Um, it's unanimous. 11 in favour. That permission has been granted. The next one is yours, Mr. Key, Mr. Ashdown, sorry. And that's item 10, uh, DM21. 4173 Community Centre, 124 Wyvern Way, Burgess Hill. Yours again. Thank you, Chairman. So, again, we're back at the same site <laughs> in terms of this is in front of the community uh, centre this time. Um, so, what we're looking at is for a change of use of the area outlined in red here in front of the community area for use as a car park specifically for the community building. Um, in terms of this is a, an aerial photo of, of the site as, as, um, as constructed. And I can see the community building here on, on the left hand side. The area to the front is existing hard surfacing, as is the, the, this, the whole square. Um, on the eastern side of the square you already have parking, and on the southern side you already have parking as well. Um, so the intention is to allow access from this southern side here. Uh, the, the, the bollards you see here are removable, so potentially you already have access. There is already a drop curb, so there is no alterations, physical alterations to either the site itself or the highway. And then potentially for up to seven cars could park in the frontage here, or it could be used for the drop-off in terms of um, uh, 
disabled um, users using the community building. The bollards at the northern end would remain in, in, in situ. And as noted in the report, there isn't actually a drop curb on that northern side in any event. So all access will be from the south. Um, as set out in report, officers are content in terms of visual amenity, as there is no physical changes um, to the site, that it is acceptable. Again, given the um, existing car parking and uses around uh, the, um, the site as currently stated, that there wouldn't, wouldn't be any um, impact on uh, residential amenity. Um, and, and it's also considered, given that, that the low number of spaces, the low speeds that any vehicles would be um, entering and leaving the site from, there wouldn't be any impact on, on highway safety. Uh, the application is recommended for approval, Chairman. Thank you. I note Burgess Hill Town Council's um, comments, um, but this isn't going to be used on a permanent basis as and when they, they request it. And I think that sort of nullifies the, the request from Burgess Hill Town Council to a certain extent. Does anybody wish to debate it? Do you wish to? Whoever, one of you two can go first. <laughs> Your ward. Fantastic facility. It's great that it's now being used by AGK. Uh, we need facilities for old folk. Uh, they will be managing the centre. Uh, it's an ex exceptional building by Crowdace. Um, I'm very happy with it. Uh, my co-ward um, uh, member, uh, Councillor uh, Cornish, suggested there might be space for a cycle uh, park, uh, one end of, or, or whatever of the space. I mentioned that. Um, but essentially, nod it through. I, I, I think what, what um, uh, and I, I think that comment has been raised in terms of um, uh, whether there is a scope to put a, a cycle um, parking on there. Clearly, there, there is space, but what I would say is in terms of the application, the application is for a change of use. And, and that's what you need to consider. Clearly, um, the, the building is in the council ownership, so I think that's an issue for... It wouldn't, it wouldn't require planning permission, and it would be something that I think the, the council, as, as landlords and, and landowners, would need to consider rather than through this, this planning application. Can I ask you then to um, contact the um, portfolio holder? See outside the co-op there. There isn't. There isn't. Councillor Brown. Thank you, <coughs> Chairman. Yes, on the <coughs> on the same subject. Um, I, I'm. Oh dear, I'm going. Have to a drink. Have a drink. <laughs> uh, um, I, I was astonished to find there is no cycle parking there, and I think it. it it rather reflects badly on the council if we were not to recognise this and try and do something about it. Um, I un understand uh, that it's... Uh, it, it, I, I just go... Uh, to, I'm going to suggest, uh, make a proposal, uh, um, that the uh, Clause 3 in Appendix A is modified very slightly. Can I, can I do that? Which page, please? Um, uh, point three on Appendix A, um, what I'm going to suggest is the area of parking hereby approved shall only be available for use of vehicles and cycles during the operating hours. So I'm adding the words, I'm proposing to add the words of vehicles and cycles. And in so doing, it would, it would uh, you know... Uh, enable um, very quickly the, the town council to take that whatever what action they already have recommended and find and find sufficient funding to provide a cycle well, the town market. council is mid sussex district council sorry there's mid sussex district council yes the town council no mid sussex or mid sussex no it is mid sussex we own it it's our land oh right so mid sussex so it would, it would show a commitment to, to that. I mean, it isn't quite open yet, but as soon as people start to use it, they're going to want to go there and, and find some way to put, put a bike or, you know, a, a scooter or whatever. 
Um, I'm going to ask Mr Ashton, I've got his name right, <laughs> to answer. Because I, I think you can probably, in reality, there's only two metal bollards either side. You can whack, whack a cycle, go through there. Mm. There's nothing to stop a cyclist going through it now. Yeah, but I, I think that's the point. I, you know, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with the sentiment in terms of getting some cycle parking on the site. Um, I think the tweaking wording, as a cyclist can use that area already, all we're trying to do is to make sure that in terms of vehicles parking on there, that they are controlled with when... Um, in terms of community um, use of the site rather than just um, ad hoc users of, of the co-op, etc. What I can suggest, um, if, if committee would like, that then I'm happy to write to the applicant and express, you know, committee's desire in terms of um, a, a cycle parking on site uh, in order for, 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 for that to be taken forward separately. We've done that before as committees. I've, we've done that numerous times. In the years I've done it, we've written to the landowner, which happens to be us, and I'm sure that we will take that on board on that. Would that satisfy you if we would do that? Yeah? Fine, thank you. Can we go to the vote, please? <clears throat> oh, seconder, Councillor Wiggleston, thank you. You're happy with us writing a letter, yeah? Some people are reticent to press it. We're missing one person. No, we're not. We're here now. As you can see, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. What, sorry? Because we're missing one person. It's, it's, we're, we're, it's, it's scheduled for having 12 of us. That is really, I heard them say that. <laughs> it's not me being smart, it's because one of us is, is, is excused, not here. Right, so we're now moving to item 11, which is, oh, we've got to do a changeover. Sorry, I've got to wait for um, Lynn. Ready? Right, we're at item 11, which is DM 20 stroke 3014, and this is up for refusal. 80 Woodbury Avenue, East Grinstead, West Sussex. Debbie. Yeah, thank you. So this application um, concerns number 80 Woodbury Avenue in East Grinstead. Um, the application as originally proposed was for a second floor front facing dormer to be installed. Um, change also for changing colour of the roof tiles from a brown to a dark grey colour. However, during the course of the planning application, construction works were carried out and the front dormer windows as erected were not found to comply um, with plans under consideration or uh, plans as previously approved. Therefore, plans have been amended during the course of the planning application to show the front dorm as is constructed and retrospective planning permission is now sought for the development. So here you can see the application site outlined in red. Number 80 Woodbury Avenue is a semi-detached 1990s house situated within an estate of similar properties. In terms of planning policy, the site lies within the built-up area of East Grinstead an area of woodland uh, lies to the rear of the property, and this is designated as the High World Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. So this adjoins the site to the rear. So here we have um, a block plan showing the front dormers as constructed. So we can see two front dormers. To the rear, a large box-like dormer has already been constructed um, under permitted development rights. Um, a lawful development certificate was granted for this in 2020. So here we can see the scheme as originally proposed. 
So on the left-hand side, um, a second dormer window was proposed to the front roof slope. Um, the right-hand side drawing shows the scheme that was previously um, granted planning permission. And this was granted under planning permission reference DM 20 0337. So we can see that the dormers are well set back from the use of the roof and also from the ridge of the roof and that they're well spaced apart to reflect existing fenestration at the property. Casement windows were also proposed. This scheme as originally proposed was deemed acceptable as the dormer windows were shown to sit subserviently within the roof slope in accordance with the council's design guide. So here we can see uh, the dormers as constructed. So they're wider, taller and deeper than the scheme previously uh, approved and proposed. Um, the dormers are sited closer together um, and you can see that sash windows have been installed um, which aren't necessarily in keeping with the casement windows at the property. It is considered that the dormer windows as constructed by virtue of their scale and sighting appear obtrusive within the locality to the detriment of the character of the area. They are not considered to sit subserviently within the roof slope. So here we have a photo um, just to show the dormer windows as constructed at number 80 and we can see this in relation to both adjoining properties. As you can see um, the roof tiles have also been changed from uh, a brown colour to dark grey. Um, the council does not have any issue with this element of the proposal um, as this could be done under permitted development rights. So here we have some photos um, showing the, the street scene. So we can see in the top photo here the dormer windows at number 80. Um, and you can see that there are sort of eaves style or gable, small gables in the eaves to some of the dwellings. And you can see further along that there are dormer windows present within the street scene. And these can be seen below. Uh, they're wider, larger dormer windows. Um, but as you can see, they're, they're sat within a, a deeper roof slope, um, where which consists of a cat slide roof to the front. Um, and there's just one dormer window at each of these style of properties. Little Heim Avenue is situated approximately 150 metres to the northwest of the site. And here we can see number 42, which is sited on the corner of Woodbury Avenue. Two dormer windows have been added to the front roof slope, um, but these are wider spaced apart to reflect existing fenestration at the property. Again, the bottom photo shows a larger star dormer window at Mindelheim Avenue. Um, but again, as you can see, the roof slope is deeper, um, and so these don't appear quite so dominant um, given the cat slide roof to the front. So all in all, um, as, per, as constructed, it is considered that the dormer windows are not subservient to the roof slope and form an obtrusive and unduly prominent feature within the street scene to the detriment of the character of the area. It is therefore recommended that the application is refused with a view to taking enforcement action. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. We do have a speaker. Now, I've take, I took the unusual role, um, as I write as chairman, to allow the speaker to speak. They hadn't registered, but there was a communication breakdown. So, for fairness, I, um, I allowed Mr. Mardle to speak. If you'd like to come to the speaker's chair, I think you've been in the chamber to listen to. You don't need me to tell you about the green lights and everything. You have two minutes and uh, to present your re request. Um, the reason for me attending in person was to hand out 23 signed petitions all in favour of the dormer windows. These were posted last week in advance of this meeting. They were, they were posted to houses directly opposite my house and end to end of my road. Um, um, on these petitions, neighbours have commented the following. Um, Mr Buckle said that they praise the owner for vastly improving the dilapidated property that was there before. Um, Ms Durham said 16 years in the area, Mr Mardle has enhanced the area and has kept um, in keeping with the area. 
Miss Surridge, her folks visit from Essex and always comment on how nice the dormers look. Uh, Mr and Mrs Goldworthy said, 15 years, my, um, my changes have uh, enhanced the street. I've got the copies of them here as well, so if anyone wants to have a look. Um, and Mr Finnis says it improves the look of the road um, and shown us what poss was possible with hard work, compassion and respect to all of us neighbours. Um, I'd just like to note that um, six of us that live in the house, my eldest is 15 and the youngest of eight months, that are all in need of their own space. We couldn't afford to move house, so um, decided to convert instead. And the baby is currently sleeping within one of these dormers as we are waiting for the rear extension to be completed. Um, <clears throat> uh, the reason the second dormer was constructed prior to planning commission was uh, following an email I sent to Deb Lynn of Mid-Sussex Town Planning, um, and she said that she had no objection to a second dormer uh, being added to the front roof slope, uh, and the builder was in the middle of erecting the one that uh, was granted planning permission. Um, uh, the only objection um, to the dormers was a neighbour uh, we do not get on with anyway, um, and there's news from the majority of neighbours stating that the same uh, had and they had many run-ins with her in the past. We've Your only... two minutes is up now. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to the planning officer. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. You can either sit there or you can sit at the back. It's your choice. Yeah, fine. But you're not allowed to take part. No. You know, that's it. For the planning application that you had received. No, no, it wasn't. Um, and um, I'd advised, because um, these plans that, that I'm showing now, these were amended plans that I'd got um, s submitted by the applicant, um, because I said I had no objection to the principle of a second dormer, but that was obviously on the basis of the of drawings that. that I was considering. Um, and obviously, um, during the consideration of the application, the, the dormers were constructed, but they did not accord with those plans, unfortunately. Um, but yes, I had no objection to the scheme as originally proposed and would have been in a position to recommend approval under delegated powers. Thank you. Uh, well, you both come up at the same time, but I'm going to go alphabetical order, but I'll, no, I won't. I'll go to East Grinstead first. Councillor so DeVal. A great deal of sympathy uh, for the gentleman. I will share a partial interest because I live uh, just around the corner in Mindelheim. Um, therefore, uh, I, I have a great deal of sympathy for what the gentleman said. Uh, but, unfortunately uh, for him, planning rules are planning rules. Um, it does go against the East Grinstead's neighbourhood plan and it does go against um, the, the, the plans as they were originally set out. However... <coughs> I do have a huge amount of sympathy um, for what you said, and therefore I will abstain from voting on this particular item because of the, uh, of the personal interest. <coughs> thank you. Councillor Brown. Th thank you, Chairman. Um, I had a look at this, and my initial impression was uh, that it didn't, although I agree with the uh, planning officer, it although it, it, the, the dormers are, are not subservient to the roof scape, um, still looked reasonable. And in terms, of, in terms of harm, which hasn't been mentioned yet, um, the property is immediately opposite St. Filio Close. And so it doesn't overlook, it doesn't overlook anybody. And the other issue is the adjacent semi-detached. Um, uh, this is required to be uh, taken down and, and new, uh, new dormers compliant with the planning application, then uh, there's going to be a tremendous amount of work, of more building work involved. Um, so, on the other hand, uh, you know, I'm very supportive of the of the planning officers and i know that um i know that dormers are are an issue um generally um 
and obviously people want to get more space and they uh, I think I'm I'm, I'm hoping that some other members might speak on this. I'm not quite sure uh, what position to take on this. So I'm, I'm between two stalls at the moment. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to take the unusual thing and I'm, I'm me speak first before I ask Councillor Swim, unless he has, to, unless you've got a very, very small quick point, because I wish to speak. Sympathy, unfortunately, doesn't have to come into this. We are, we, we are the upholders of the, uh, the planning rules. That's what we're here for. And we've, we've had this on numerous occasions, and I'm thinking of the one down in um, Hurst Pierpoint where they demolished a house. We had utmost sympathy, but unfortunately by demolishing the house, they lost their plan, extant planning permission. Um, take a slightly contrary view. If you look at the windows, they don't look in keeping. If they have been vertical, they probably would have looked a bit more acceptable but they're not, they're totally out of keeping with the windows you've got on the house itself. And they are bigger, that's why I asked the officer to say, was the first one constructed in line with the application she received? And no, it wasn't. The principal have two, probably would have been okay if they'd been constructed as per the plan submitted. And we can't second guess. I have utmost sympathy myself and I do but to see this one in black and white on this case, I'm afraid. But uh, Councillor Sweatman. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I do feel sorry for the, for the gentleman, but um, it's not been adhered to the original uh, application that came before the case officer. And I, I think what, what you must all realise is that in planning, I think you must try and be as consistent in our deliberations. Uh, we can't just approve one thing and then refuse something when they're sort of saying we need to be consistent. And uh, obviously, you know, looking at that photograph there, it's, um, they are rather large and not in keeping with the street scene. I think if they were uh, to the original plans, that would obviously be acceptable. So I would go with the officer's recommendation, unfortunately, on this one, Chairman. Um, my Vice Chairman, Councillor Cook. Thank you, Chairman. Well, it's been said, I have great sympathy for, for the gentleman, but as you mentioned, um, I will remember the gentleman who uh, had bought a steel barn, knocked it down, built a house, and he's 65, and he got a mortgage, and he's had to remove it because he didn't have planning permission. And these windows are overbearing. It's not at all like the original drawing. And as the officer said... Uh, why, why, why not put casement windows in? Because it, it, it makes it look even worse. Um, and we have, as you say, we have uh, rules and we have to stick to them, I'm afraid. The Brown, you, you don't want to come back? Or are you happy with what you've heard so far? I'm happy with what I've heard. Okay. Right, I need a proposer to refuse. My Vice Chairman, seconder. No, yeah, Councillor Spetman, as you spoke. Can we go to the vote, please? No. Okay, could we have the results, please? Chairman. That's nine in favour, one against, one against and one abstention. So this is actually refused. That's what the recommendation was, we, we, we to refuse. So one, as you can see up on this here, we had nine to support the officer's recommendation, one to not support it and one to abstain, which Councillor de Bell, that's what he would be doing. Okay, I'm sorry to say, Mr Mardo, that that has been refused, but I'm sure you'll get a letter from the officers explaining your next actions that you can take. Thank you. Item 12, questions pursuant to Council Rule Procedure 10.2. Uh, do you notice of which has been given? I have none. 
So therefore, I um, close the meeting at 18.25 or 6.25, if you're not into that. Thank you. Thank you.